In the following video we are going to demonstrate the approach to basic pediatric life support. Unlike adults, the majority of pediatric cardiorespiratory arrests are not caused by primary cardiac problems, but are secondary to other causes, mostly respiratory insufficiency. Hence, the order of delivering the resuscitation sequence should be A. Airway B. Breathing and C. Circulation Therefore, cardiopulmonary resuscitation should be started as soon as possible for optimum outcome. This should start with the first person on scene, so it's important for not only physicians, but also the general public should be familiar with the knowledge and skills required for basic pediatric life support, so the best care possible can be delivered in what's often a stressful condition. Now we are going to talk about the exact sequence of basic life support. We start by safe approach, then assessment of response, opening airway, assessment of breathing, keeping the airway open, checking pulse, and eventually cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Shouting for help and calling emergency is the first step that should be done, approaching the patient with care and freeing the scene from any possible dangers as we don't want to inflict any further injury to the patient and we don't want the rescuer to be a second victim and finally evaluating airway, breathing and circulation. The following step is assessment of response which is done using AVBU scale, a system used in emergency medicine to evaluate the patient's level of consciousness and it's interpreted as A. The patient is awake V. The patient responds to verbal stimulation. B. The patient responds to painful stimulation. And U. The patient is completely unresponsive. Following that is opening airway, which could result in recovery without further intervention. This is achieved by head tilt and chin lift. And in case of suspecting spinal injury of any kind, the neck and spine should not be mobilized and instead we open the airway using jaw thrust. The next step is assessment of breathing. We look for respiratory movements on chest and abdomen, listen for press sounds, and feel air movement at the mouth and nose. Then it's important to keep the airway open by rescue presses. For children, we close the nasal opening and perform mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing, while for infants, we perform mouth-to-nose and mouth breathing. Following that is assessment of circulation. In infants, we pulsate the brachial artery, while in children, we pulsate the carotid artery. The palpable pulse of more than 60 beats per minute indicates good perfusion. Start cardiopulmonary resuscitation if there is no pulsation, or pulse of less than 60 beats per minute with poor perfusion. We do chest compressions to pump blood to vital organs. In older children, two hands technique is used just like adults. One hand technique can be used in young children. In infants, there are two techniques for chest compression, hand encircling technique and two fingers technique. The child must be lying flat on his back on a hard surface to allow complete chest recoil after each compression. Depress the sternum by about the third of the anterior posterior diameter of the chest, with keeping the elbow straight, at a rate of 100 compression per minute, and the ratio of chest compression to breathing of 30 compressions to 2 presses in case of one rescuer, and 15 compressions to 2 presses in case of 2 rescuers. Continue till transferring the child to hospital for advanced care. Thanks for watching.